Drama please. Reliable 100% fiber internet kaya ang sarap maging tambahay with Red Fiber. Former President Fidel Ramos dies at the age of 94 on Sunday, July 31. The Ramos family issues a statement on the former president's death and says details about funeral arrangements will be announced in the future. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and Vice President Sara Duterte on Sunday, July 31, expressed their condolences to the family of former President Fidel Ramos. Marcos in a statement says, The former president lived a full life as a military officer and a public servant. Ramos served as chief of the Philippine Constabulary under Marcos's father, the late dictator Ferdinand Marcos. He famously withdrew his support from the elder Marcos, his second cousin, during the 1986 People Power Revolution that toppled the dictatorship. Meanwhile, Vice President Duterte highlights the role of Ramos in peace efforts in the country. It was during his term that the government signed a peace agreement with the Moro National Liberation Front. Countries also paid tribute to the late president, under whose term the Philippines saw renewed international confidence fueled by political stability and economic growth. Ramos was the Philippines' 12th president, serving from 1992 to 1998. He was also chief of the Philippine Constabulary and chief of staff of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. says the Philippines will not be joining the International Criminal Court, but his decision will not stop the ongoing proceedings against killings under former President Rodrigo Duterte's violent war on drugs. The country stopped being a member state of the ICC on March 17, 2019, a year since Duterte announced his decision to withdraw after then-ICC prosecutor Fatou Bensouda initiated a preliminary examination into the brutal war on drugs. ICC prosecutor Karim Khan is currently investigating the drug war killings during Duterte's presidency. Though the withdrawal will not stop the proceedings, international lawyer Priya Pillai says getting cooperation in the conduct of the probe may be difficult. Marcos's announcement comes days after he met his legal team on July 27 to discuss the government's strategy regarding the international court. President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. names Medal of Valor awardee Lieutenant General Bartolome Vicente Bacaro as the 58th Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces of the Philippines on Monday, August 1. The new military chief is the first AFP Chief of Staff who will serve under a fixed term of three years. Bacaro, who served as commander of the AFP Southern Luzon Command, will replace General Andres Centino, the last AFP chief of former President Rodrigo Duterte. Marcos also names Police Lieutenant General Rodolfo Azurin as the new Philippine National Police Chief. Azurin is currently the commander of the PNP Northern Luzon Police Command, composed of Ilocos Region, Cagayan Valley, Central Luzon, and the Cordillera Administrative Region. Medardo de Lemos, longtime assistant director of the National Bureau of Investigation, is also named as the Bureau's new director. Before his official appointment, de Lemos was designated by Justice Secretary Jesus Crispin Remulia as the officer in charge of the NBI. Meantime, veteran election lawyer George Garcia is poised to return to the Commission on Elections as its chairman after President Marcos appoints him to the poll body. Garcia was first appointed to the Comelec in March by then-President Rodrigo Duterte. But in June, the Commission on Appointments bypassed Garcia, forcing him to leave the poll body. Garcia replaces former Chairman Saidamin Pangarungan, whom the CA simultaneously bypassed in June. A high-profile election lawyer, Garcia represented Marcos during the latter's electoral protest following his failed 2016 vice presidential bid. To dispel allegations of conflict of interest, he inhibited himself from cases involving Marcos in the run-up to the 2022 elections. The Court of Appeals orders the city prosecutor of Taguig City to file rape and acts of lasciviousness charges against TV host and actor Vong Navarro. In a decision dated July 21, the CA's 14th Division reverses and sets aside the Justice Department's previous resolutions from 2018 and 2020. In these resolutions, the DOJ junk model Denise Cornejo's 2014 complaint accusing Navarro of attempted rape. The CA reiterates the preliminary investigation is not the proper venue on the respondent's guilt or innocence. On January 22, 2014, Cornejo filed a case against the actor for alleged sexual assault, the night of a controversial incident which left Navarro severely injured. According to Navarro, he was attacked and was a victim of extortion by Cornejo, Cedric Lee, and their other companions. Meanwhile, Cornejo's camp said he sustained his injuries after Lee and company caught him attempting to rape Cornejo. (music) 
Blackpink finally confirms its plans for the rest of 2022 as the group releases an announcement trailer titled Born Pink on Sunday, July 31. The four-member girl group will drop a pre-release single in August while their new album will be out in September. Blackpink is also set to embark on a world tour beginning in October, but additional details have yet to be announced. The upcoming comeback will mark Blackpink's first project since October 2020 when they released their first studio-length album, The Album, that carries the title track Lovesick Girls. Since then, members Rosie and Lisa have made their solo debuts. Composed of Jenny, Jisoo, Lisa, and Rosie, Blackpink made its debut under YG Entertainment in August 2016. Uh, uh, Meantime, after almost three years, Cot 7s Bam Bam is finally back in the Philippines. The 25-year-old singer holds a press conference and fan meeting in Cebu and Manila. In 2021, Bam Bam made waves in the K-pop scene when he debuted as a solo artist. He released his first mini-album with the title track, Ribbon. Following its success, he made another mini-album titled B, which featured Who Are You, a collaboration with Sulgi of Red Velvet. Meanwhile, Sandara Park surprises Filipino fans when she went on stage to perform the 21 classic I Don't Care at the K-Pop Masters concert Friday, July 29. Sandara was not on the concert's original lineup, but was in the audience to support Bam Bam.